Hey, what's going on YouTube? This is Raven89 coming at you and today we will be doing a BGC 16 best of three with Rock 8 VG, BGC, my friends James that I actually met at a PC up in North Jersey. So um, basically we've been testing out our teams for VGC 16 and just testing out different things. So <clears throat> we will be doing, excuse me, uh, we will be doing a best of three. Uh, I'm going to show you guys the first battle, then I'll show you guys the second and possibly third if there is one. So let's go ahead and jump into this. Um, I do have the recording here. It's not going to show the whole team. Uh, VGC only requires four Pokemon. So I'm going to be bringing Kangaskhan, Sableye, Kyogre, and Seedra. But uh, in the back, I also have Ferrothorn and a Palkia. And my opponent uh, has a Kyogre. Bronzong Salamence, Lipard, and on the back they have Xerneas and they have a Molile. So basically, I'm assuming that he was going to be afraid of the Ferrothorn, but I needed to be able to hit the other threats on his team. So I did bring in the Kangaskhan and the Sableye to basically disrupt any first turn shenanigans. Also, in the back of my core, it's going to be basically Kyogre and Kingdra. Um, and yeah, this is basically it. Let's go ahead and jump into this battle. It's been a while since I've been since I've recorded, so it's gonna take me some time. Uh, focus issues, as always. So I'll be starting off with the Kangaskhan and the Dark One, which is say the lie. And Lipart and Salamence is gonna start off on their side. So there's Intimidate against the Kangaskhan, which is not really good for me, but. Uh, we'll see what we can do here. Uh, he is going to go ahead and Mega Evolve. He does Mega Evolve first, so that confirms that his Salamence is going to be faster than my Kangaskhan. I do have an Adamant Kangaskhan, so that's one thing to keep in mind. And there is VGC14 Kangaskhan uh, going to Mega Evolve there. So, there are the two Mega Evolutions right off the bat. Lipar does go for a Fake Out on the Kangaskhan itself. And uh, I actually go for a Fake Out on the Salamence to basically disrupt what he was going to do. So that's a wash turn. Basically, he did get some chip damage. There's the Encore onto the Sableye. I, kind of, I should have kind of figured that he was going to do that, but I kind of stayed in anyway. There's the Draco Meteor onto the Kangaskhan. I pretty much assumed that this was going to be a one-hit KO. And I live. So that's very, very, very surprising. Uh, his special attack is going to fall. And I do get off the Drain Punch onto the Live Part. It's going to do major damage. Hit once, I'm going to recover some health, and then I am going to go for the second hit, and it lives on 1 HP, literally. So, uh, unfortunately, I don't get to knock it out. The two hits do hit, and I'm on Gordon to fake out. So, here I am going to switch out the Sable Eye, basically, to try to get something else going here. Uh, I do bring in the Kyogre, hopefully... Basically, he wouldn't be able to do anything against the Kyogre anyway if he doubled into it. It would do good amount of damage, but um, I kind of figured that it was a sw safe switch and it could basically tank whatever it's, it's going to come its way. And there is the Primordial Sea from the Reversion. So, Salamance does go for the double edge. That's going to hit for a lot of damage. And it actually lives on 21, which is very awesome. But there's the foul play. He did smartly double in into the threat, which was Kangaskhan, and knocks it out right there. So, definitely unfortunate losing a hard-hitting uh, Pokemon like Kangaskhan. But here, it does bring me, allow me to bring in the Seedra. Uh, the, I'm sorry, Kingdra. And he's it's going to switch us to Salamance into his own primal Kyogre, so that's going to be pretty fun uh, there itself. Um, so that's pretty cool. So here, I def uh, he actually goes to switch, he actually double switches, which um, is okay by me. I'm definitely getting damage out uh, spread across. I do go for the Ice Beam. Uh, basically, it hits the Kyogre. It doesn't do barely any damage at all. And I do have the Life Orb on the Kingdra as well. There's the Origin Pulse. Unfortunately, I do miss on the opposing Kyogre, which is definitely unfortunate. Um, but it does major damage to the Bronze. I actually critical hit, so that's pretty awesome there. Miss, but then I get the trade off on the crit, so that's pretty cool. He does switch right back into the Salamence, and the Bronze is going to go for the Protect. And uh, I do go here for the Muddy Water, and uh, it's going to hit the 
Sound Edge. It does a decent amount of damage. It is in the rain and life orb as well, so not too bad damage. And I do go for the thunder onto the Salamence, and hopefully this should be knocking it out, uh, which it actually does since it is neutral. So there goes the Salamence. There goes his heavy hitter. The only thing that he has left to hit really, really hard with is basically the Kyogre. Uh, out comes the live part yet again. I'm assuming he is going to go for the fake out, which he does go onto the Kyogre. Does a little chip damage. And I do go for the Muddy Water. Unfortunately, I do miss the Bronzong. I am going to take out the live part, but um, the Bronzong wasn't touched. That sh should have been a double KO, but it wasn't. So definitely unfortunate. And um, he goes for the Trick Room. Now, this Kyogre is a slower Kyogre. Um, obviously, the Kingdra is going to be a faster ki Kingdra, so I can take advantage of the Swift Swim. Uh, Kingdra does go for the Protector here. And uh, I do have a slower Kyogre to be able to uh, basically not outspeed but have the weather advantage. Here is a Water Spout. It's not going to do much damage onto the Kyogre because um, basically it is a little bit bulky. I do have the Thunder on the Kyogre so that's going to be doing some decent amount of damage right there onto the Kyogre and he does actually forfeit from that point on. Uh, basically he wasn't going to be able to come back from that so that is a 1-0 for me. Now let's go ahead and jump into the next battle. Um, on this turn he basically, I didn't bring the Ferrothorn. He's, he, I actually spoke to him after the battle, and he was definitely afraid of the Ferrothorn. I actually didn't bring it to battle one, and I also didn't bring it to battle two. So this next battle, I'm actually same team, except I'm not bringing the Kangaskhan. I actually brought the Palkia. And on his side, he brought the Mawile instead of the Salamence. So let's go ahead and jump into this battle and see what goes down. Very, very good team. Um... His team's constructed well, too. I mean, it's a Trick Room team uh, hybrid with the Salamence. So. Anyway, so here's the Sibla and the Kingdra. I did start off with those two, and here's the Lipard and the Bronzong. So I'm assuming he's going to go for the Fake Out onto the Kingdra, which he does right there. And uh, I am going to go for my own Fake Out to disrupt the Trick Room setup right there as well. So a little chip damage here and there. Wash turn. I'm okay with that. So... <clears throat> Dark one, I am going to switch it back just in case he's going to Encore. I don't want to get stuck into that predicament again. I do go ahead and switch into Kyogre, which is going to Primal re uh, Reversion into Primal Kyogre. So it's going to set up the rain. So any water move that I do here, it should do extra damage because of the Primal to see activating before the attack actually goes off. So here's the foul play. He does go for the foul play onto the Kyogre. Does Good amount of damage. That's a three hit KO right there. I do go for the Muddy Water. It should do a decent amount of damage. It actually brings the Life Heart down to its Focus Sash. So that's pretty awesome. I am going to take some chip damage from the Life Orb. And there is the Trick Room. So, like I said before, this is a slower Kyogre. And, um... So I'm hoping Kyogre can take advantage of the Trick Room. And I'm probably just going to leave the Kingdra back a little bit. So it doesn't get destroyed too much. So... He is going to switch out his Lipard into his own Kyogre yet again. Uh, just like last game, I think he switched out the same Pokemon. I do go for the Protect just in case uh, he does anything crazy. Basically just to scout out. He does go for the Gyro Ball onto the Kingdra, which would have done too much because... Um, and there's the Origin Pulse. It does not knock out the uh, Bronzong, unfortunately. And I do switch up to Kingdra, but... Uh, Kingdra is going to resist that Gyro Ball and also it's going to be going last because of the Trick Room so it wasn't going to do much damage anyway. I do bring out the Sable Eye. He does go for the um, Gyro Ball yet again. Like I said, this is a slower uh, Kyogre so it's not doing much damage there either and it's resisted. Origin Pulse is going to do a good amount of damage on the Sable Eye but it does hang on. It is a bulkier Sable Eye and I do have the Citrus Berry there too. And here is the my Origin Pulse. It does hit both Pokemon fortunately and that's going to knock out this Bronzong and basically bring his Kyogre to about halfway. So it's almost there, not quite there yet. And here comes the Mawile. So I was definitely afraid of the Mawile. He is going to intimidate, which is not going to affect too much except for my foul play. Um, basically, I want to try to burn this Mawile, but he does go for the smart move and goes for the protect. I do go, I actually protect my own Kyogre as well. Just in case he goes for anything crazy. There's the Willow Whips that is going to be protected, and there's the Ultra Pulse, and it does hit the Sable Eye and it is going to knock it out as well which is definitely unfortunate for me 
I really wanted to burn that Mawile um, because it's going to do major damage against my Pokemon. So I am going to bring the Palkia here, hoping it can take some kind of hit, um, but I'm not quite sure if it's going to be able to take a hit from this Mawile. He does switch out his Kyogre into his Lipard yet again, so he's going to try to disrupt the team uh, light game here. Here he does decide to go for the Maul Isle Mega Evolution, so I'm assuming he's going to go for Play Rough. It's going to knock something out. Here he does go for Play Rough onto Kyogre, but he misses. That was crucial. If he hit that, that would have been pretty much game for me, unfortunately. He did miss. I do go for the Thunder onto the Live Part. It is going to knock it out as well. There's the Hydro Pump. This is a Choice Specs Hydro Pump in the rain. Definitely going to be able to take out this Maul Isle. If that thing lived, I'd be very, very, very surprised. And Trick Room ends, and out comes the Kyogre from this point. This is his last Pokemon, and he is going to forfeit the game from there as well. So, very good good, uh, very good very game, James. Um, your team composition is good. Uh, I do like the team. I know you did say that you didn't like the team. I do like the team. It's got a hybrid Trick Room kind of thing in this meta. Uh, this meta is just crazy, so Trick Room... Hybrid teams, I think, could be good, but um, it really depends on switches. Uh, this, I still don't know how I feel about this format. I mean, I'm not really a huge fan of it because basically one wrong move, basic cost you the game. A bad lead matchup can cost you the game. So, um, I don't. It's not. I. It's not that I don't like it. Just because you have to think more. Um, I just feel like. I don't know. It's just it. What you do depends so much on the game. I don't know. It's really weird. Like if you make a mistake, there's really no way of coming back. You might as well forfeit, especially at a competitive level. If you go to regionals or something like that, if you make a wrong move in this format, you're pretty much done. And it's really unfortunate. I know on uh, VGC 15, if you made a mess, uh, if you messed up, it could cost you the game. But there could be possible ways to come back as well. In this format, I, I think that's a little bit less likely. It's just you mess up, it's might as well forfeit. Don't give out any information and go on to game two, unfortunately. And this um, is a very fast format, as Aaron Zhang and other uh, professional VGC players say. It is a way faster format than VGC 15, which is cool. But at the same time, I liked close, drawn-out games. Not stally games, but, um, you know, games that are punch-for-punch punch predictions here and there. And... Those are the kind of games that I like, um, personally. Uh, this format is cool, but I don't know. I, I still don't know how I feel about it, but... So that was my best out of three. Uh, best out of three game matchup with James Rock 8 VGC. Check out his link. I'm going to have his link uh, to his YouTube in the uh, description section below. So you guys can check him out. Um, he also did the video on this battle as well. So you can check out his side, his thinking, his commentary. His is probably going to be a little bit better because he does live commentary. I do do the post commentary on my uh, setup here. Um, not sure. I'm, I might test out doing live stuff, but um, I'm not really sure how that going to turn out so i might test it out later uh i we did do another best of three but i'll have that in the next video probably in a day or so i'll probably put that up and you guys can check it out i hope you guys enjoyed i'm glad to be back and recording it's been a really long time and um even though i'm not a huge fan of this new format um i am glad to be recording again and hopefully get some uh, material out there for you guys if it's not vgc hopefully i could do some kind of let's play or something like that i'm thinking about possibly doing a um Let's play of uh, Wonder Lock, uh, Wonder Trade Lock. Basically, um, every time I catch, it's basically a Nuzlocke, but um, every time you go to a new route, you catch the first Pokemon. If you don't catch it, it's you know you lose your catch for that route. And basically, um, when you catch that Pokemon, you Wonder Trade it away, and you have to use whatever Pokemon you get back. Um, I do have certain rules though. I try to keep it um, within. Five levels of the Pokemon I traded away. So if I caught like a level five, it has to be anywhere between level one to level ten. If it's higher than that, I don't want to use it because it can be pretty broken. And uh, basically, I think about five because five is grindable. You you can definitely grind out five levels pretty quickly, I believe. And uh, but I would do grinding off screen anyway if I were to do gr uh, grinding at all. But 
let me know what you guys think. I might be doing a uh, wonder lock, so that would be pretty cool. Not sure what game I would do yet. Uh, I would like your feedback on that, actually. If you can leave a comment in the comment section below, let me know what kind of uh, lock you think I should do or what game I should do. Um, it's going to be a little bit harder to do older games. Uh, I could do a Nuzlocke with older games. I do have some of them, so I can do that, but I won't be able to do a Wonder Lock because I don't think they have the Wonder Trade feature in those. I think that's only in X and Y and Auris, so... Um, and I, don't, I really don't want to play Oris again. So basically, I would do a Wonder Lock of X and Y, uh, basically. I do miss X and Y, and I think y, uh, Pokemon Z will be coming out hopefully super soon. Uh, so to get a reminder of the story would be pretty awesome. So let me know what you guys think. I have gone on long enough ranting, so I'm going to end this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it so much. I'm back. So let's see what kind of trouble we can get into this year. Thanks guys so much for watching. Leave a like if you like the video. If you don't like it, dislike it. It's okay. Honey Badger don't care. I just appreciate you guys watching the video. Catch y'all later. Peace out.